we have a MacBook Air. Um, this is a uh, this is an A1932. This is a 2018, uh, 2018, 2019 ish. Um, it's a uh, it's a low power, but then it says rework. So it's been here before, and uh, now it's back. So let's see what we are dealing with. Let's quickly take the back over out. Uh, uh, I'll see if uh, if by taking the back over out, uh, by seeing the board, I will remember the work that was done on it otherwise i may have to follow up on the ticket number okay uh, okay nothing nearly stands out uh this is not a liquid damage device uh, okay uh, do we have the standby light? No, we don't. Okay, so let's disconnect the battery. Uh, let's check for any quick uh, short. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, by the way, let's open up the board here. Yeah. Mm. It's not of the ones that were previously open. Let's check the open bug view. Let's see if we have it previously open. Okay, there you go. That's it. We have it on the uh, open board view. Okay, so we check we checked for paper balls, uh, paper balls short, uh, which is uh, we utilized the disk drive C64. It is it's sitting on paper balls uh, line and also C6482. So we checked that we do not have a short in either of those. So the next thing we want to do is we want to connect power to the device. To see what uh, what uh, we have, so let's connect power to it. Switch our multimeter back to voltage mode to see if we have um, see if we have PP bus voltage. We use the same cam to check for PP bus voltage, and we and we get in zero point zero zero point four two zero zero point four two. That is a uh, that it's very indicative that we have in about five volt on our ppdc in so let's check the other port uh so it means we're getting five volt instead of 20 volt let's check the other port okay uh it's 12 point okay 12.26 that is also indicative of uh of five volt and uh let's see the other port so it may just be that we have an issue with the cd32 uh, as you can see one of the port we are getting nothing uh, 1.9 ish that's too low so it may just be that we have an issue with one of the cd3215 which is why so this one we are getting that's the one we have an issue with and then the other one seem to be trying uh, to make its way to 20 volt uh, because should it make its way to 20 volt then we will get uh, 12.6 uh, uh, 12 12.6 but in this case it's trying but that's uh, okay so so most likely we have an issue with the second port so let's take the board out to verify if that is uh, what the case is uh, from 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 here we can see that one port uh, we get in 12 point something uh, 12.3 on one port and then the other one we are not even getting close to that so that is very suggestive that one of the cd3215 is most likely failing and uh, as a result we are not able to make our way to 20 volt so the device as you know uh, this is going to work on uh, on a 20 volt 
not 5 volt uh, so if, if the device is sitting at 5 volt your PP bus is going to be 12.3 and not 12.6 so let's quickly take the board out and uh, head over to our so the giveaway basic the giveaway now what we are what we are following up it's on the one of the CD3215 that we are getting uh, almost zero zero reading from in terms of the PP bus so that it's what we are going to uh, follow up on okay the board is out so now I use this okay so uh, we, 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 we know one of the port uh, is not working at all so let's see let's, uh, let's see that what do we have we have zero volt okay and then on the other side Let's flip it. As we know, uh, this this uh, this they have channel A and then channel B. So if you check one, okay. So um, so we see one channel it's fine, and then the other channel is not. So if I flip it, if I flip it, that will be utilizing a different channel on the same port. And uh, what do we have there? It's zero. So definitely we have an issue with this editor. The corresponding editor to fifteen will be this one. And uh, let's go to our board view to give you guys an idea. So um, this is the corresponding CD3215, uh, this guy here. And we are able to confirm that with our fuse, which is F3010. Uh, so we see that on one, ch so basically uh, the, the, this, this, uh, uh, the ports, they uh, basically have two channels. So that's where you have the CCA and the CCB. Uh, I'm just gonna see that see if I can uh, give you guys so yeah so where it says USB CC1 and then USB CC2 so um, so USB CC1 and USB CC1B okay so USB CC1A and obviously uh, yeah so and then the other one will be USB CC CC1B and then the other one will be CC1A let's see and then you are CC12 okay so CC12, CC11, and then CC1A, CC1B. So um, that is that is referring to this and this. So which means that your cable, your, your, you have a channel like this one, and then if you flip it, you have another channel like this. Sometimes you may have CC1, for example, working, and then CC2 not working. And other time, uh, 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 and so other times you have CCA working and CCB not working. In this case, we can see that uh, one channel is it's, it's open, the other channel is not, which is why we have 5 volt, and uh, that is indicative that we have an issue with the corresponding uh, CD3215. So the next thing I want to do is um, I, I can just go ahead and replace it, and uh, that will, uh, yeah, because we can clearly see that we have an issue with the CD3215. Another thing we can just, uh, we can also check is to see if we have any short on the CD3215 uh, output let's see if we have any short there and yes as you guys can see we do have a short on the CD32 uh, output and that short is it's uh we are able to find that on the output of which is a uh, pin 53 connected to uh C3208 which is pp 3 underscore UPC XB underscore LDO so we definitely have a 40 CD3215 so um let's replace that and uh Test again. Okay, 
Let's get another CD3215. We are going to be using this one here. We're getting one from an A1707 board. Okay, it's out. And then uh, if we notice the, the orientation, we see the small dot there that is going to re uh, represent our pin one. So we uh, have to follow suit in, uh, in, 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 in installing. So also in terms of the pin one direction also, if you look at, uh, if you look at the balls inside, so you have the outer border and the inner border. Inside the inner border, you have the small uh, piece that is cut out here. Now that it's an indication of the pin one of the chip. You see that? Yeah. So like so, they say that one that this this section here that is indication of the pin one of the of the chip. So when you are aligning the chip, so for example, this dot now we now have to do this. So this dot has to face this way to correspond with this. So that is the the pin one. I mean, this it can con come handy if you do not have a board view uh, to while you're making a replacement. Okay, and uh, we have a cap there that actually may and moved to while we were removing the CD3215. So let's uh, put that back. Okay, give it a bit of time to cool off. The next thing we want to do, we want to, uh, we will try to still measure for a short, uh, just to be sure that, um, so um, usually the, the, the way I, I do the installation is to see, I took the, the CD32, uh, I took the chip out exactly the way I took it out, and exactly the way I took out uh, the faulty one, I did not address the pads on the board, neither did I address the pads on the chip. So what I do the first time is I just try it out and just I just installed it exactly the way it is with the hope that I don't get crumbling uh, balls underneath uh, the chip. So if that happens, I will have a short, and it means I will not uh, I will not have a functioning chip. The safest way of you, I, I, the safest way to do it though is when you take the when you take out the the, the chip from um, from the donor, you should um, uh, basically uh, remove the old solder from the board. So that way you don't have, you don't potentially run into 
are crumbling and so down they need to chip but sometimes uh, it works for me and other times it doesn't work and then i have to remove it again and then we do it again so it's just that it's quicker to do it that way but sometimes it doesn't work and then you have to uh, remove it and then obviously uh, flatten the solder uh, on, on the board and then uh, redo it again so what i also want to do is before i plug power to it uh, before i connect my charger i'm going to see if i have a short uh, is are you able to see the multimeter i don't you're not getting any connection of light yet okay let's see initially we we're having a short here so we don't have a short there we don't have a short there we don't have a short there okay that's ground okay Okay, so we don't have a short. Now let's uh, let's test to see if we have any changes. So let's see, we are expecting to have 3.3 volt here, and it was also expecting to have 3.3 volts there. So let us see if we have that. 3.2, that's about okay. And then the other one, 3.2. Let's check, and then when we flip the channel to the other side, because we knew we had, we, we had one channel working, the other was not working. Let's see, right about now. Three point two, three point two. Both channel working. Now let's see what we have on our PP bus before we check uh, if we have twenty volt even. Let's see what we have on PP bus. If PP bus is twelve point six, it means we have twenty volt. If PP bus is twelve point three, it means we have five volt on the board. So let's uh, let's see what we have on our PP bus. We will be utilizing the same capacitors from the beginning. Uh, which is either of these two to see what we have on our PP bus. Oh, okay, I fell off. Let's uh, try that again. Okay. Okay, we have 12.6. That means uh, our CD 3215 that we installed was actually uh, properly installed and we do not have crumbling balls so that is also suggestive that we are having 20 volt and that is also suggestive that the device is going to be starting at this point so let's uh, now we can now confirm that we indeed we have 20 volt if we see that that is 20 volt okay so that is one channel let's check the other channel let's see if we have 20 volt on the other channel as well we have 20 volt Yes, we have 20 volt. Okay, let's check the second port. Okay, that's uh, and then the other second channel of the port. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to clean that section of the board and then test. To be sure uh, to at least see that we have apple logo that the device is starting and uh, i suppose that will now be the end of the repair
okay let's uh, put this back uh, meanwhile we are going to we are going to advise this client to to consider replacing their charger now um, I in the beginning I mentioned that this is coming in for a rework so we have actually worked in that section of the board before we have replaced uh, it's CD3215 on this board before if the device is coming back with the same thing with the same port uh, that CD3215 that we just replaced now we have replaced that in the previous repair so if that is coming back with the same port uh, with, with the same I mean uh, we haven't replaced another CD32 so it, it's uh, we, we would obviously advise the clients to consider um, you know getting another charger so that they don't uh, have the same the same issue as uh, we're having now okay it's uh, Let's see if we have uh, Apple logo. We are going to connect only minimal cables uh, just to uh, to allow us to get the device to start. We are not going to connect all the cables. Just enough to get a uh, to get the device. Okay. And by the way, on on this machine, um, if it's uh, and also the twenty eighteen uh, and above. Um, so usually one of the the thing that you you see it's a uh, with the battery not connected uh, you may get your fan becoming crazy the fan running very high and then also you may uh, you may experience a uh, lagginess from from the device okay so charge is connected do we have haptic feedback mm, nothing yet mm, is everything okay no haptic feedback let's see uh, do you have charger voltage pp bus zero okay what's happening is charger not properly connected uh, why do we have a zero let's see the other port Twelve point three, twelve point six. Okay, that should be starting. We will find out why the other port was not working. Okay, we have haptic feedback, and then we have upper logo. That is good. But uh, let's see why. Uh, let's see why was the first port not working. Let's check that again. So we show. okay now it is working probably we didn't get a there was no proper connection but now it's stuck on 12.3 okay 12.3 means we have in 5 volt on that port wait don't tell me that it blew again uh let's see 12.3 and then 12.6 so that port is fine so this port we get in 5 volt instead of 20 volts so let's flip it and see if we get uh, hmm let's see what do we have okay this is a, a typical uh, replica of exactly what we had before 
one port it's uh, one channel is working and then the other channel is not uh, okay no this is the chat now you're getting five volt but the other side it's not even responding to you you're not even getting nothing so that's what you're getting this is exactly what you had in the beginning but the difference is i mean the other one was uh they're not we're, we're getting five volt and uh yeah but we're getting 20 volt so one of the port is working the other port is not working so what is going on uh let's uh try to so if we uh, uh so the cd32 that we just installed now just went bad again uh, Okay, let's see, do we have a short on that line for of the city thirty two fifteen? Okay, we don't have a short. Let's uh let's replace let's replace the DC jack. It's interesting because uh we use the same DC jack. And it did that. Uh, it's created. Okay, this is a MacBook Pro DC jack, but for the purpose of testing, it's going to work. Let's see. We have 12.6 or 12.3. 12.6 will mean we have 20 volt. 12.6 that's 20 volt that's the second port let's check the first port the first port do we have 12.3 or 12.6 okay we have 12.6 and then if we flip it do we have still 12.3 or 12.6 or zero like uh one two two or one point something volt okay flipped it also works flipped so okay so we are not going to reuse this uh this is this is uh, definitely not yeah we're not going to reuse that uh yeah but um i'm going to get a okay let me just quickly get another port charging port macbook air <laughs> Okay, so we have another charging port here. We are only going to use this to to do the testing. We are not going to. That's uh, yeah. It's not going to be permanent. There, we're only going to use it to do the testing. Okay. 
this back. This is the one for the client. Uh, Peter, I hope you remember to tell them that this should not be reused. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And uh, before the device leaves, you we remove our, our DC jack so they can replace their own DC jack. Okay? And remember to tell them that this should not be be reused and also to to tell your client to make sure to yeah to get another charger and by the way this is a warranty repair the client is not paying for it uh, because it's been here before however we must uh, inform them about the possible uh, cost being the charger uh, so Nonetheless, uh, the client is still not going to pay for the repair. Okay, let's see. Uh, the same port that we have an issue with. Let's see, do we have 12.3 or 12.6 or do we have 3 volt? So we have 12.6, that's good. 12.6 should tell us, that means we will be starting any time soon. We have trackpad feedback and there you go, we are starting and uh, our device is built in okay thank you guys uh, that's going to be the end of our video we have another more repair to go to so we we just quickly wrap up for this and also this is going to be finalized by peter so uh yeah that's uh, about our work thank you guys i will see you guys in the next one